Okay, so a rapper, a white nationalist, and an ex-president walk into a bar. Once upon a time, that would have been a setup for a really crazy joke, but last week that setup became reality when Kanye West and Nick Fuentes had dinner with former President Donald J. Trump, the current leader of the Republican Party. I don't know, guys. Just when you think that Donald Trump has jumped the shark, he finds something else to do that he hasn't done before, which is crazy and ill-advised politically. So Donald Trump announces his candidacy for the presidency in 2024. And then a week later, he has dinner with Kanye West, who is in the middle of a very public psychological breakdown or doing a hell of an impression of somebody who is. And Kanye's plus one, who is the worst dinner date in the history of dinner dates, Nick Fuentes, uh, an avowed white nationalist and anti-Semite. And somehow they make it through Secret Service and all of Trump's political advisors and have dinner with the big guy. It's very weird. Um, I, I don't even know where to begin. And a week later, what, which is when this is being recorded, we're still, de still dealing with the political and cultural fallout. So Fuentes is a Christian fascist. He's staunchly anti-Semitic. He's advocated for dictatorship, especially after the 2022 midterms, when he was hoping for and expecting a red wave, and it was more of a red spritz. Uh, he was dismayed, and he said that this is exactly why we should have a dictatorship, because democracy is inconvenient for him and his unpopular beliefs. Um, he is an enthusiastic supporter of Donald Trump, to the point uh, that he was actually at the January 6 riots. So he got there early. He held his own rally. He spoke to his supporters. He said things like, you know, we need to be prepared to take back the country by force if necessary. He said shit like the founding fathers would join us um, in, in, you know, in this effort if they were here. Um, doubt it. But, I mean, just absolutely insane things. And... Yeah, that's, that's the level of his dedication with Donald Trump, or to Donald Trump. Now, what's interesting is Kanye West has since announced his own candidacy for president. Uh, as a matter of fact, apparently one of the things they wanted to do there was Kanye wanted to pitch the idea that Trump join him, join Kanye's ticket, as Kanye's vice president. Now, I don't know Kanye, obviously, and I don't follow Kanye uh, because... Number one, uh, I didn't watch Keeping Up with the Kardashians, so that wasn't my wheelhouse in terms of pop culture. Uh, I recognize that Kanye is obviously a brilliant musical artist, but uh, hip-hop is not, you know, it's not my preferred genre of music, as you can see from the Def Leppard poster right there and the Journey one above it. Um, so my understanding of Kanye comes purely from headlines and, like, social media and memes. So... I know just enough about Kanye to know that he has been in serious mental decline for some time, or again, doing a hell of an impression of somebody who is. Um, and uh, that said, even though trolling is vogue, I think, among celebrities now, especially right-wing celebrities, so people like Charlie Kirk and Ben Shapiro and Steven Crowder um, and, uh, and Tim Pool. Um, I don't think Kanye West is a troll. I don't think he trolls. I think he says things that he sincerely believes, even if those beliefs are beliefs are erratic and inconsistent and could change from day to day. I think in the moment he sincerely believes the things he says. So when he asked Trump to be his vice president, I imagine he was 100% sincere. He was not looking to piss Trump off. He was probably not expecting Trump to be upset. He probably thought from his vantage point, uh, it would be a hell of a combination. It would be the ultimate team up. It would be, it would be, um, I don't know, uh, Alien and Predator. It would be um, Jason and Freddy Krueger. I mean, I, I don't know. It would just be like the ultimate evil tag team. Um, of course, Trump, the ultimate malignant narcissist, was pissed and thought it was insulting and disrespectful and and all these things. But anyway, the bigger issue was the fact that Donald Trump, an ex-president, with a robust staff and security apparatus. I mean, my God, he's surrounded by Secret Service who have to do, like, background checks on anybody who wants to get within, you know, earshot of a former president. It's just, it beggars belief that this happened because even if Trump didn't recognize Fuentes, which 
he has since claimed that he had no idea who Fuentes was, and I'm actually inclined to believe him. You know, I guess it's possible that they had some sort of like indirect or direct correspondence in and about January 6th, but there's no proof of that. And Trump strikes me as a very oblivious man um, because he's so self-absorbed. But Kanye had to walk. I mean, I'm just trying to imagine how many people they walked past to get to the dining room at Mar-a-Lago. And nobody was like, uh, Mr. President, this is a really bad idea. Not that I guess he would have listened anyway, but it, it just beggars belief because it adds a level of credibility among conservatives and right-wingers. It, it grants somebody like Fuentes a, a platform and a credibility that, even though he's fairly popular among the alt-right, um, he didn't enjoy before this. I mean, the clout sharking that he's getting from this must be intense because here we are. Everybody's talking about it a week later. Not just content creators on social media, but mainstream outlets. Like, it's a headline everywhere and everywhere. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and actually, Fuentes is so repugnant, so repulsive as a political commentator and as a person that he's the enemy. He's a, a critic and opponent of other repugnant right-wingers like Charlie Kirk and Ben Shapiro. Shapiro, because Shapiro's Jewish, and again, Fuentes, I this cannot be overstated, Fuentes is hella anti-Semitic, just about as anti-Semitic as it gets. If this were an RPG, Fuentes would have dedicated all his all his points in the character construction, all of it. He would have maxed out the anti-Semite character slot. Like, that's, that's what he does. That is him. That's his essence. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's just, it just beggars belief. It's incredibly irresponsible. And even if Trump didn't know him personally... Um, there, this should be a flat condemnation, which, by the way, though Trump has made excuses, I, I didn't know who Fuentes was. I, I still don't know much about him other than what people have told me. He didn't express any anti-Semitism when we <laughs> ate McDonald's or whatever the hell that they ate. Um, even though Trump has given excuse after excuse after excuse, he hasn't flatly condemned Fuentes or Fuentes's supporters or Fuentes's sentiments, Right. Because in the end, Trump really doesn't care about any of that shit as long as Fuentes, Fuentes supporters, and the sentiments that Fuentes supporters espouse uh, either support Trump or can be used to support Trump. That's all he cares about in the end. So he has not condemned Fuentes. Um, now, it, it's interesting because some Republicans have come out and in their own way uh, condemn this dinner. I mean, obviously, never Trumpers, people like Senator Mitt Romney, Congresswoman Liz Cheney, Congressman Adam Kinzinger, people who are on Trump's shit list politically, uh, have come out and explicitly condemned Fuentes, condemned the dinner, and most importantly, condemned Trump for having the dinner in the first place and platforming someone like Fuentes, in addition to all the other stuff that Trump has done his entire life. Now, Republicans who are still looking to have a political career in Republican politics, people like uh, Senator Capito, uh, Shelley Capito, I think, Senator Capito, Senator Bill Cassidy, Lindsey Graham, Susan Collins, Susan Collins, who famously said after Trump's Ukraine impeachment, I think he's learned his lesson. The enlightened centrist uh, Susan Collins, who doesn't have, you know, the, the fortitude to follow through with her convictions. They've gently condemned the act to, oh, this is a really bad idea. You know, there's no place for anti-Semitism in the Republican Party, although you could easily argue that that is the single greatest nexus of anti-Semitism in the United States is within the Republican Party. Republicans don't want to confront that, but it's true. So anyway, it's just, it's absolutely ridiculous. But one thing I do want to show which happened today um, was... Uh, a press conference with Mitch McConnell, the current Republican Senate Minority Leader, uh, who will probably be the Republican Senate Minority Leader in the next session in January. So let's take a look at what uh, the Great Turtle has said. There is no room in the Republican Party for anti-Semitism or white supremacy. And anyone meeting with people advocating that point of view 
in my judgment, are highly unlikely to ever be elected president of the United States. There is no... So, I mean, fairly explicit for McConnell, except, of course, again, like most other Republicans who are still active in Republican politics, he didn't mention Trump by name, right? But this is as forceful as any non-Romney, non-Cheney, non-Kinzinger politician on the Republican side. That's as forceful language as it gets. I will say, however, it might be tempting for some people who are overly generous with the benefit of the doubt to try to give McConnell the benefit of the doubt here. But you shouldn't. And here's why. In light of what you said, that there's no room in your party for anyone who harbors these anti-Semitic views, if Donald Trump wins the Republican nomination, would you support him? Look, let me just say again, there is simply no room in the Republican Party for anti-Semitism or white supremacy. And that would apply to all of the leaders in the party who will be seeking offices. There's truly no limit to the GOP's cowardice. Um, I, I mean, again, like Trump's ethical and intellectual and policy failures are so vast that it really does boggle the mind. You almost have to have like some sort of dedicated person on staff or some sort of like ongoing database to constantly track his moral, intellectual, ethical, and policy failures. And even after many people blame his extremism, his terrible endorsements for the fact that the red wave didn't manifest uh, uh, this past midterm, the GOP still won't quit this guy. I mean, even somebody like Mitch McConnell, who reportedly can't stand Trump, and we can believe that, right? Because they're two different flavors of evil. Trump is this, tr Trump is the Joffrey Baratheon of the Republican Party, right? Just this reflexively narcissistic and cruel idiot who happens to be the figurehead of the GOP and from that position is capable of doing extraordinary damage not only to his enemies not only to the country but his own allies whereas Mitch McConnell is somebody like Tywin Lannister and I, I hate to say that as somebody who loves Tywin Lannister as a character but McConnell's more of the you know the uncharismatic you know puppet master behind the scenes trying to keep the unit together as much as he can and of course there's tension there um but in the end, McConnell is a political creature, and there's, I don't think there's any moral pitfall that Trump can pratfall into that would cause McConnell to publicly denounce him unless he was certain, unless he was absolutely certain that there would be no political consequences that wouldn't hurt McConnell's own position, his own legacy, and that of the GOP. So... Just interesting stuff, all this. Again, I imagine it's going to be dominating news cycles for a while, and we'll see what, if any, uh, political ramifications Trump will have to pay for this. But I wouldn't hold my breath. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, and I hope that you did, please be sure to hit the like and subscribe. Also, my link tree is in the description below, so if you have a sec, go ahead and share the love on all my social media accounts. Also, if you want to express an opinion, eternal devotion, or undying contempt, go ahead and leave a comment because we're always looking for feedback. And on that note, I look forward to pondering politics and pop culture again with you very soon.